Listen, my next guest, I'm super excited about him as well. Uh, I've known him for quite some time. Uh, he is a former NFL player. Uh, he is a three-time Pro Bowl appearing NFL player, motivational speaker. He is a father, and he has recently founded an incredible organization called the Locker Room Campaign, and I'm really excited to talk to him. Would you please join me around the world in welcoming Brother Tommy Harris. Bless you, man. Thank you for being here today. Glad to have you. So glad to have you. Yes, sir. Now, now the world knows you as a, a former NFL player, and they've seen you on the football field. I saw you on the Chicago Bears when you were in Chicago, but they don't know that you're an incredible psalmist. Uh, I, I, I do a little bit, but oh, I'm not going to do this after you just slayed the stage <laughs> like that. I told him in the back, he said, now, don't, don't throw me out here under the bus. I said, no, I'm going to put you up there and let you sing on the spot. Oh, no. <laughs> I got some help. <laughs> now, honestly, there, there is a message that I, I know it's a testimony, actually. Revelation 12 and 11 says, we overcome the enemy by the power of the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, sir. There's an incredible testimony that I know you have to share with the world. Uh, two months after being married, uh, you lost your wife very tragically. Yes, sir. And uh, you all had children. Yes, sir. So tell me, how has your faith held you, kept you, and helped you to navigate through such an, such an awesome loss in your life? I'd say my faith, um, first off, let me say that I was the best at everything. Mm. Number one, at getting drafted. Number one, at going to Oklahoma University. Number one, at, so I never was really tested. Mm. I knew God in a good place. I didn't know him when things didn't go the way I wanted. Oh, wow. Wow. So at, at, at this time in my life, my faith is stronger than it's ever Wow. Been. And it's been tested. I would always ask God when I was in college, like, God, I want to know you this way. And I, and I want to I be able to walk into a room and people would really feel the anointing oh, wow. of God coming to this place. And you got to be careful what you ask That's God it. for. That's it. Yes, sir. And, yes, and, you and, do. And my, my, my whole thing is that no, no means that I am perfect. No means that I am perfect. But every day I have awakened with a, a, a quenching to God, like, what do you desire from me? Mm. And, and after mm. losing my wife, uh, my wife went to have a breast reduction uh, in Oklahoma, and she was doing it for Valentine's Day, getting ready for our big wedding. We ended wow. up getting married January 1st. And uh, something told me I was playing in San Diego, and God said, why don't you just marry this woman? And, and everything, you know, when, you, when you're in the, when you're a man and you're going through a relationship, everybody's telling you about what you love. Yeah. And, and, and it kind of makes you drag your feet a little bit. Yeah. Kind of makes you so. At this particular time, me and God just started spending more and more time together. I was by myself in San Diego. My wife was pregnant in Chicago. And um, uh, I remember her flying down to come visit me in San Diego. And uh, I said, man, let's just get married. Let's go to the courthouse and get married. Wow. And I got married on New Year's. And after that, my wife went to get a breast reduction to, to fit her little dress. And she, you know, you know how they, yeah, she wanted to look good. And, and the wedding was in July 8th. And uh, she called me. She said, come down to uh, Oklahoma after wedding. We're going to go out. We're going to have a blast. So I'm getting on the plane to go meet her. And I find out that she's, she's unresponsive. Mm. And I'm like, how's she unresponsive? It's a breast reduction. She should right. be in and out. Right. But she ended up having a brain aneurysm. Wow. And, 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 and at that moment on the plane, I remember taking off on the plane when I got the news to go meet with her. I remember God just saying, do you trust me? Mm. And, and in that moment, man, tears began to run down my face, and every tear meant something to me. And every, every tear begins to speak to God. Like, I remember on my knees asking God that, God, I want to feel you, know you in another way. And, and I want to. So God said, do you trust me? And every tear made sense. Like, don't mm. panic. Trust in God. Mm. And from that point, my whole desire in life is to show people to appreciate breath. Wow. And, and, and at 28, I That's pulled good. a cord on my wife. At 28, I pulled a cord. I had to decide whether she is going to be a vegetable or should she go on. And, and God said, let me handle it. And wow. we decided to do what we had to do. And, and from that point on, I told God from every day of my life, I would show people to show their loved ones, give them the flowers while they could smell it. Mm. Wow. 
don't wait till the battle is over. Don't wait till the uh, crying over the casket. But every day we got to realize that we are dying daily. That's good. Yeah. And that casket gets closer every day and every day. Absolutely. So my whole thing is just to, to just to encourage all the believers, man, that God is able to do whatever. He's Praise able God. to be Praise exceedingly God. abundant of all. It's amazing to me. It's absolutely amazing that when you ask God for uh, increased faith, yes, sir. that it comes through the trying of your faith. Yes, sir. You know, I say this often, faith is not faith until it's been tested. Yes, sir. Until you have to trust in the Lord with all of your heart mm -hmm. and then completely lean not to your own understanding. Yes, sir. Because his ways are not our ways, his That's thoughts it. are not our thoughts. As high as the heavens are mm -hmm. from the earth, so are the ways of the Lord from us. When you really are in that position that you have nothing else to depend on but God That's and it. his word. That's it. That's when your faith really becomes faith. And, and what you're saying means so much to me now. Praise God. I can understand yeah. it. You know, when you Absolutely. haven't been tested, you just hear these words. Right. But when you've gone through something, yeah. Yeah. when you've gone through That's something, it. It, it. and you know that, uh, but, but I'm, I'm here to encourage everybody that in the dark times, yeah. we've been made to endure and yeah. endure yeah. And, and endure. And I, and I think my message, my message, to, to all the men and all the people of God is that we need to know how to prepare for these struggles. We need to be prepared for these things to come. We've been made endure for the night, but yeah, your joy, joy yeah. comes in the morning. Yeah. So that's what it is. I, I'm just, I'm going to keep going and going until the morning comes. I'm going to keep going that's for good. God. So let me, let's talk about the preparation. You said we need to prepare. What do you think are the best methods of preparation or how do we prepare for the struggles that are inevitable. In this life, you shall have tribulation. Yes, sir. We know it's coming. Yes. So how, what, how do you prepare for that? I think preparing is admitting the truth. Mm. And, and you would look at, I was talking to a friend on the way here. I say, it's crazy how we would laugh at alcoholics who get enough courage to go admit that they're alcoholics. Oh, wow. We would laugh at drug addicts that will admit that they have a drug problem. Mm -hmm. But we are the same people that sit and laugh at these people that struggle with the same situation mm -hmm. they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we just have to admitting, admitting God that I'm not what I say I am. Admitting that this ain't what it is. And once you can admit, you can, God can begin to grow those yeah. things. True repentance. That's it. Leads to God's forgiveness. That's it. Yeah, and, and total restoration. Yes, sir. Now, following your wife's passing, uh, you left the NFL. Yes, sir. What prompted you to do that or what made that decision, uh, helped you to come to that decision? Well, I actually, I didn't leave the NFL. It kind of like the doors were locked on me. Okay. okay. And, and when you, I, I'm so glad that it happened, though. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm learning so much. Uh, I'm learning so much. It's painful, but it's necessary. Uh, and and I'm good. telling you, I'm so serious. Like, I, don't, I, I tell God, whatever you need to do. Thy will be done. Whatever. That's good. That's good. Whatever. If That's I got to lose again, if this, in That's order good. to do what you need in my life, God, I didn't even pick my name, my skin color. You Lord put Jesus. me here, God. Yes, sir. I didn't get to do any of it. So whatever yes, you do in my life, you can do it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I, I got I to gotta warn you, you're on the, on the stage with a I'm pastor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry now. Now, you can't, you know, you can't, ra you can't raise your voice like that. I, I'm, I miss, I'm. Because I'll go with you. I got you. <laughs> we'll tear this stage up here on, on TVN tonight. Uh, is, is there anybody that's got a whatever kind of faith? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you've, you've launched an incredible speaking series called The Locker Room. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us more about that. Uh, I, I, when I said the, the locker room, when I said the NFL kind of locked me out, mm. I wanted to build something for men that you cannot retire from, a locker room that you can never mm. retire from. That's good. And, and this is something I feel like needs to be in all cities, that men can get a Tuesday and all come and meet from all religions, mm. all, all things. Mm. Oh, coming to an understanding of what God wants from us. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of times you'll hear, like, at man conference, I'll have friends that's Muslim that want to go, but it's in a church. And they don't. And you're like, these little things are cutting you off from seeing who God is. Oh, that's so I, I built this that's platform good. that whoever comes, but I know it's in me. Yeah. And, yeah. and I built it. We can have it in an aquarium. We can have it wherever y'all want it to that's be. That's good. The church is in me. Go ye there. That's it. That's go it. ye there. Yes. 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 Baptizing him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, the scripture says, and I become all things to all men that I may win some. Yes, sir. So, so I, I, I take it because of your NFL experience, you've been exposed 
to a very vast array of personalities, religious backgrounds, yes. beliefs. Yes. How do you manage ministering to those people and, and standing firm in your faith, but encouraging them to take a look at your faith and finding out that Jesus is the way? I, I think the way you manage and the way I got in trouble in the beginning mm. is when you would say you would talk or project words that your feet have not lived. My God. And, 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 and My a, God. A, a lot of times. Hold time. on, hold on. I can't let you skate by that. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. Your, 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 your mouth would project something that your feet have not yet Haven't walked. been there. My God, that's you, good. You've been preaching mama that's testimony good. of that's who good. got his daddy testimony. You, you haven't had a, a, a road to Damascus' that's spirit. That's good. That's good. And, 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 and this is my thing. Like, I, I feel like a Paul and, and God has changed a lot about me. My name is no longer Tommy. It is peaceful. It is patient. Hallelujah. It is kind. It is, I'm, I'm oh able to come and understand God for who he is in my life. And that's, that's I have a personal story about my daddy. That's good. Yes, that is excellent. Yes. That is excellent. So, so I have a question uh, about your legacy. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of times we, as men, we don't give enough thought give enough attention yes, to the legacy that we're leaving. And I don't want to just be exclusionary and just say it's only men, yes, men and women alike. But I know that it's very prevalent uh, in, in, our, in our male species that we really need to take a look at what legacy we're leaving. Yes, sir. And you, you've got the opportunity to have left a legacy on the field yes, sir. and, of course, with your family and in the world. Yes, sir. What, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to remember Tommy for? when you have left this, this world mm -hmm. and ultimately are kicking it with Jesus in heaven. That's how, when I, when I leave this place, what I want to leave here, and, and I thought it's, it's crazy, I thought I've been thinking about this question last week, mm. and I kind of was just, and, and God was just basically, I say, when I leave here, I want to leave here with something. Mm. See, I want to leave here with something. It, it's not a, I want to leave here knowing that God was who he said he was. So, I, I want to leave here knowing that when I get on the other side, that all that I did here was true. And all that, I, I want to leave here with something. And, and my legacy, I want them to know that I was just a beggar telling other beggars where the bread was. My God. That's it. My God. That's it. My God. That's it. So, so what you described was faith. Yes, sir. What you described was faith. Yes, you know, you, you want to leave here grasping hold of your faith. Yes, sir. Tightly holding on to the faith, to, yes, to defend the but faith. Believing, yes, sir. Yeah, you know, I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. When I read that particular passage of Scripture, uh, I, I got excited when I started doing some research uh, and found out that what we was really talking about was I have defended the faith. Yes, sir. I have protected the faith. Yes, There's a whole lot that comes against people yes, in general. There's temptation, there's trial, uh, there, there's the enemy who roams throughout the land seeking whom he may devour. Yes, and we've had to defend our faith. It's mm -hmm. hard to maintain your faith, yes, especially you can attest having gone through what you've gone through. Yes, sir. Uh, what method do you encourage other people to use? How do you encourage them to defend their faith, to protect it? Because we know that the enemy, through doubt, through disbelief, through all of the things that he throws at us, he wants to steal that faith. Right. How do you protect that faith? Protecting the faith. I, I would just say keeping it at God's feet, mm. that, that everything that we have, it, it, see, we don't have to protect what God has given us. Mm -hmm. My daddy gave this to me. Like, yeah. he going to watch over whatever. Yeah. Like, that's the thing we have to, we have to learn good. that there's nothing the enemy can do to hurt us. He comes, he's a plot, he's a ployer. These, yeah. are, these are all smoke and mirrors. And if we can really just learn to endure mm. through it all, whatever it is, whatever, whatever it is in our lives, I don't, I don't care. You are not your mistake. And as long as your chest is still moving and that's your good. body is hot, Hallelujah. you could keep growing. You can yeah. keep moving. Yeah. And, and, and that's pretty much it. It's, it's getting up and going over and over. In that movement is showing everybody that you trust God. That's good. It's more than enough. And I, I want to do more walking than I do talking yeah. at good. this point in my life. That's good. Yes. That's good. Uh, if, if, uh, if, there were, if there were a lot of people who grabbed at your message and made a determination that they wanted to put their faith into action, yes, sir. how much greater would this world be? It's, it's amazing, and I think it starts tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now faith. Yes, sir.
Now is the time of salvation. That's it, right now. Th there are some people around the world who may be struggling with their faith. Yes. Sir. Struggling because they're going through seasons of trial and uh, the enemy has attacked them. Life has simply challenged them. Yes. Doesn't necessarily have to be the enemy. Yes. The death is a part of the transition of life. Yes, sir. And you've gone through these things. Can you just speak a word? Look at that camera right there and just speak a word to encourage them, but also let them know that, that Christ died to save them. Right. Um, I just want to tell all the believers, that's like Pastor Smokey said, that Christ came and he died. And that every day you wake up, that you keep that on your mind, that the price is already paid. Mm. And every day of your life is a gift. It is a gift. Tomorrow may never come. So what you do today matters. If, if you've gone through grief, I ask myself this question. Do I, God didn't put me in that casket with my wife. Mm. So there's something that he has to do still in me while I'm here. And I want to tell everybody that if, if you've gone through a struggle, if you've gone through anything, just trust and know that God is able. Yes, he is. He, he is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we can ask or think. That nothing in this world is personal. It's all a part of God's kingdom business. And if you're in the kingdom, God, you say your will be done, and, and we leave it there. And you don't try to figure it out, or, but this ain't happening. You trust and know, and you put your money where your mouth is, mm. and you allow your feet to line up with your words, trusting that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above. Yes. And that's the faith. You take faith, and you throw it, and you say, God, do it. Take it. And, and I'm telling you, when we can take this thing and throw it to God, yeah. He does, he, he does wonders with it. And, and that's it. Just telling those to never give up. Yeah. Constantly trust God. And, and I want to tell everybody, really, like, as you see your chest moving and as you feel the breath coming out your body, just know that at every moment, God didn't have to put it back. Mm. He didn't have to put it. So, so let's, not, let's not waste our breathing on, on telling people off or complaining or, or, or when we breathe, make it count. Make it yes. pur purposeful. Yeah. Uh, when I go home at night and I get in an argument like we all do in relationships and different yeah. things to fix it before it, it ends. And, and, and you just have a way of, you take it one day at a time, a day at a time, a day at a time, and God continues to show up. And I promise you, he'll make a way. Praise God. Come on, let's praise God. I am exceptionally glad that this man of God came this way today to share with his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your heart and your testimony with the world.